Lifestyle Designs, this is Zach here with Secrets of Longevity.com and today we're going to make an Amazonian or South American style elixir um, partly inspired by some of the herbs I recently got and I wanted to make a drink that was based around that. Um, the tea base, which you can see is already in here, is composed of three herbs uh, Paudiarco, Chonca Piedra, and Cat's Claw or, or also known as Una de Gato. Um, they all have similar properties or properties that can be blended together to have an effect on the body. They're best used uh, for antiviral, antifungal, even anti-cancer benefits. Um, one of the newest ones that I have just started using is Chanca Piedro, which translates as the stone breaker herb. It's uh, used to break up calcification in the body. Uh, it can help break up kidney stones, gall stones, and that's what chanca piedra means, breaking stone, and it breaks up these hard parts in the body. I'm not exactly sure what properties in it do that, but that's what it's well known for. Cat's Claw and Paudiarco are two herbs I've been using for a long time, actually, and Paudiarco is very strongly antifungal. Um, they actually, the natives in where the tree grows, use the wood to make bow and arrows for hunting, and specifically because the wood it takes a very long time to break down. It doesn't rot, basically. And so that's the antifungal properties in it. So it would make very strong, very long-lasting wood for their bow and arrows. Um, so it's great for anyone experiencing issues with candida. And it can be combined with the two herbs I just talked about to work with candida or just used on its own. And then Cat's Claw is another renowned South American tonic herb, which is... Uh, very strongly antifungal and antiviral as well. So I've already added the honey into this drink. I've got two to three tablespoons in here. I'm going to add the next ingredient, which is going to be some coconut butter. And coconuts grow in South America, so that's one reason I'm using coconut butter as opposed to other similar ingredients. There's going to be some things that aren't South American, but I'm doing my best to make this South American themed. So the next thing I'm going to add, which isn't South American, but is a great superfood and caloric source, and source of complete protein, is hemp seeds. Uh, they're approximately 35% protein, and I'm going to add 6 tablespoons in here. That's 3, 4, 5, 6. big bag of cacao nibs <laughs> I'm going to be using here to make this a very chocolatey drink. Chocolate is great for overcoming the bitterness of any herbs or other foods that are being used in the drink and they also help um, increase the absorption rate of the medicinal qualities of the elixir you're putting together. So cacao is known for dilating the capillaries in the digestive system to help uptake the nutrients that are in the drink. I'm just going to add two tablespoons of the nibs, and later we'll be adding the powder as well. If you're interested in checking out any of the ingredients I'm talking about or reading any articles I've written on the topic of any of these ingredients, check out the links in the drop down menu below if you're watching this on YouTube. I've written an article on cacao you might enjoy reading if you want to know more about its uh, wide array of health benefits. We're going to add a tablespoon of local bee pollen. Um, of course, this isn't South American either, but most of the South American stuff is going to come later in the drink once we've done the first blend. So that's it for the first ingredients. We're going to pop the top on, blend this up, and then we're going to add the more delicate powders that we don't want to blend too long. And there we go. So I'm going to add the rest of this bag of leucuma powder. Leucuma is the dehydrated powder of egg fruit, which is a South American um, fruit. It's very high in B vitamins and other vitamins and minerals, and it's actually a low glycemic sweetener, so it's great for adding to sweeten up and make any of your drinks creamier. And along with the coconut butter, it's going to really make this sort of a, give it a creamy texture, which is nice with the chocolate. 
Next, we're going to add two tablespoons of mesquite powder. This specific mesquite from Argentina, but it grows any, everywhere from southern United States down to uh, northern parts of North, South America. And it's very high in calcium, very high in lysine. It's not a complete protein, but it's high in lysine, which is a great addition to combine with any nuts and seeds that might be, which tend to be deficient in the amino acid lysine. It is also quite sweet, but also low glycemic, which makes it great for adding to drinks that you don't want to have overpoweringly sweet, but have a nice sweet undertone going on. I'm adding a little dash of cow powder, which I add to all my drinks, to get in some extra iodine into the diet. We need about 4 milligrams of iodine on a daily basis to help prevent the accumulation of radioactive compounds and radioactive iodine in the thyroid. And basically, if you think of the thyroid, this isn't what it's actually like, but if there's little slots that iodine fits into, if there's not enough of those slots filled with iodine, it's going to be filled with the radioactive compounds. So if it's all filled up with iodine, then you're actually immune to accumulating radioactive compounds in the thyroid to a certain extent. And of course, there's also great minerals, and uh, it's a great source of organic sodium. I'm going to add some cacao powder, approximately, well, three tablespoons exactly. And three. And then another great South American herb that we're going to add is maca. Mm. So maca grows in the Andes, the high Andes of Peru and the surrounding area. It's an amazing adaptogen. Uh, some people criticize it because it's got a lot of hype around it. But you know that hype does have a basis in scientific research, and it's great, especially in the winter months, um, because it grows at such a high climate. I would particularly recommend it for people, even in North America, and a lot of people will say you should only consume herbs in your area, ideally. But you know, there's these great, unique properties in some of these things from faraway places that that we might not have access to in the herbs of our specific area. So even though it is a, um, in the radish family, which in the radish family there's commonly thought to be a lot of goitrogenic foods, which are actually harmful to the thyroid, they can increase the likelihood of thyroid issues later on in life, uh, such as messing up metabolism, which can be a problem for people having trouble losing weight or even gaining weight. Um, but maca actually helps regulate the thyroid, and which goes against the commonly held belief that it's a goitrogen because it's in the radish family along with kale and all those other um, brassica family foods. Uh, it's also a great source of protein. It's very strong at increasing your libido no matter where it's at. So it will make you more virile. It will make you more fertile. So just watch out if you're concerned about those kinds of things. We're going to add a little bit of stevia to add a little bit more sweetness. Basically, a quarter teaspoon in total. And then I'm going to finally add three or four drops of sweet orange extra essential oil, which is an organic essential oil from Germany. And it's going to make this sort of chocolate orange flavor, which should go quite nicely with all these stronger tasting herbs. And here we go. And we're going to sample it in one of these amazing glasses that we have here at her apartment. <laughs> A very tiny amount. <laughs> it's very dark, very rich. Perfect amount of sweetness for my liking. Um, I always recommend going on the low end of sweetness because you don't want to overpower it. And there's some other great tips on elixir making, if you're interested in incorporating these into your lifestyle. Um, my friends Brandon, JS, and Heidi all created an ebook together titled Elixir Synergy, and you can find it at the links below as well. And I also have an article I've written on elixirs, which links to their ebook that you can read if you want to sort of get a primer on what that ebook's about, and also what um, my take on this whole process of practicing getting in herbal and superfood nutrition in the form of a blended drink on a daily basis is all about. 
So push your comments below and embrace life with that one.